$1,400 fourth stimulus check specifically focused on Social Security, Retirement, Disability, SSDI, Survivors, SSI, VA, RRB, Low Income, No Income, Seniors, Older Adults, and of course, People with Disabilities. I have all the details and what you need to know right here in the video, so let's get right into it. I know in this video, as requested by some of you right here in the community, I do want to talk about the latest details of a $1,400 fourth stimulus check where we currently stand, what is the likelihood of additional money, checks going out to the low income or fixed income or even everybody across the entire country, where do we currently stand with the economy, what's going on with the economic data and everything else going on out there that we may need to know about. That's a great question. Let's get into it and talk through all the details. However, really quickly before we do, thanks so much for joining me. If you haven't done so yet or if you happen to be new here, please make sure to subscribe right down below the video. It's totally free to do so and I'm here for you right by your side every single day, watching the latest details, hitting the wire, doing the research and breaking it all down into these short videos so you can stay posted on what's actually going on as things are changing rapidly and I want to break it all out so you can see anything out there going on right now that you can possibly grab and or take advantage of as things are changing very rapidly. So again, thanks so much for joining me. Please subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet and let's get into it and talk about the details of a $1,400 for a stimulus check, where do we currently stand and answering the questions from many of you right here in the community. All right, now first off, before we get into this full disclaimer, I think all of us here in the community know this, but again, I want to throw it out there anyway. As of right now, no, a $1,400 fourth stimulus check has not been approved yet. But like I just said, I think all of us completely understand that, but I want to throw the disclaimer out there right away anyway, so that we're all on the same page. However, let's quickly talk about what's going on here because just because we're asking Congress, we're making videos, we're sending them letters, we're sending them emails, we're trying to reach out to Congress asking for additional money or relief, does that mean another check is going to be coming? No, not necessarily. Unfortunately, Congress doesn't care about us, but they do care about the economy, okay? They care about the economy, and that's why we got to watch this. Now, again, I've talked about this before in other videos, and I want to make it very clear. It all comes down to the economy. In the event of another check being distributed, they're going to look at the economy, okay? What does the economy need? And then they're going to use us, the American people, as basically the proxy to get that cash into the into the economy very, very fast. That's why they do the checks, not because they feel bad for us. They don't care about us. They don't feel bad about us. They don't care at basically at all. But either way, that doesn't really matter. Let's talk about the details of where we currently stand, what's going on with the economic data, and what's going on with the economy. Now that we're out here, you know, second half of 2023, where do we currently stand? This is when everything's supposed to hit the fan, right? Well, that's what they've been saying. So let me talk you through what's going on here. And again, I'm going to try to make this video relatively quick here because I literally could sit here for probably a couple hours talking about all the different things that are going on, but I will try to break this down quickly. I'll hit on some of the key points that we need to watch here going forward. So a couple things that I watch closely. Again, the Federal Reserve, okay? I know we might think, really? The Federal Reserve? Why do we care about them? Well, here's the thing. Remember, back in early 2022, so well over a year ago now, in March of 2022, they started aggressively raising interest rates, okay? Now, here's what many experts and everybody is saying, economists, a lot of people are suggesting. The interest rate hikes that we all had last year in you know 2022 and basically the first half or so of this year, 2023, Basically, all of those rate hikes have not even been felt yet by the economy. They're saying that they're lagging the real economy by about 18 months. So in other words, basically starting about now is when we're going to start seeing the effects of those first interest rate hikes way back in early 2022, okay? So as a result of that, now is when we're going to start feeling all those effects. Remember last year, they had four consecutive 75 basis point rate hikes, one after another, four of them. Well, guess what? That's going to be coming a little bit later this year. We're going to start to feel the effects of those a little bit later this year, okay? Even a few months out from right now. So like many people have been suggesting, the second half of 2023 is when we're really, really going to see the crash. Well, okay, we're still kind of waiting. We're seeing a little bit of details here, but as I described before, it all happens very slowly. But when it starts to crash and burn, it kind of happens relatively fast, right? But leading up to, it's kind of a slow process, you know what I mean? 
kind of, you know, putter along. And then all of a sudden it's like, whoa, whoa, we're like going down the roller coaster straight down, right? So that's kind of what it's going, <laughs> what it's like, right? Anyway, um, I know, funny analogy. Uh, but anyway, you get my point, okay? So that's what I want to watch closely here going over the, the next couple months here, which is, you know, do we really start to feel the effects of all these interest rate hikes from last year as well? Next, we, we need to continue watching the unemployment rate, okay? I've described the details of this before in other videos. The unemployment rate is very, very important. Now, it has been historically very low over the last several months here. Is that a good or bad thing? Depends how you look at it. Generally, a low unemployment rate would be good because we would think, wow, unemplo or, unemployment is very low. A lot of people are working. You know, the economy must be strong. But here's the downfall of that. There's only one way for it to go. If unemployment is historically low, the lowest that we've seen it since the 60s, like what is that, 60 years ago? then guess what? Um, well, that simply means that there's only one way for it to go, which is up, the unemployment rate to go up. And like we talked about before in other videos, which is lawmakers have talked about implementing automatic stabilizers to distribute stimulus checks in the event that the unemployment rate gets to a certain level. Okay, well, that's very important to understand as well. Now, what have we seen here over the last, I don't know, six, seven months or so, maybe even longer, we've seen huge corporations laying off tens of thousands of people at one time, thousands upon thousands of people at one time. We've seen tons and tons of major layoffs across major industries going across the board. So to see that unemployment still is relatively low is a little bit of a head scratcher. I think a lot of us are thinking, I don't know if I trust these numbers. They don't really seem to make a whole lot of sense. We're seeing huge, huge layoffs across huge sectors of the economy. And yet they're telling us unemployment is still historically low. Really? That doesn't really add up in my head, but what do I know? I'm not a mathematician. Not really, but I do understand numbers and I do understand simple logic, right? So anyway, we can unpack that in a separate video. If you'd like to, we can go down a rabbit hole there and dig into more details about the numbers that are actually being reported versus the reality of the situation. Anyway, we can talk about that before. That is a video all in, in and of itself. All right, so that's what I'm watching closely as well. Next, we'll need to continue watching inflation going forward. Now again, with these uh, these different topics that I'm talking about here, like the Federal Reserve, interest rate hikes, and unemployment, things like this, inflation, yeah, it's one of these topics that's like, well, we should probably talk about it. We should probably pay attention to it. But at the end of the day, if the economy really goes down, as they're suggesting, even more so than what we've seen so far, if we continue to see this happening, then guess what? they won't care at all about inflation, okay? The new baseline for inflation is not likely going to be the two to two and a half percent range that the Federal Reserve wants it to be at. That was kind of old school, okay? There's no way we're getting back down to those ranges, at least in reality. Maybe the, you know, the fabricated numbers that they tell us might say, oh, look, inflation is back down at two and a half percent, we're good. But then I think all of us can look at it and think, really, in the real world that we all live in, uh, not where these numbers are being fabricated from. Inflation is not just two and a half percent, right? So we'll see what happens here going forward. Inflation is probably going to base more around somewhere around the range of maybe three and a half, maybe four and a half, somewhere around there, maybe to three and a half to four and a half percent range somewhere around there, but it's probably going to be significantly higher than the benchmark they previously had, which was two to two and a half percent, okay? But what does all this mean going forward? It all means the economy, okay? The economy needs to be strong. It needs to be robust, at least needs to be maintaining and doing, you know, something that's productive, okay? The economy is what it all comes down to. Remember this, the whole purpose behind stimulus checks is when the economy goes down, when the economy is contracting, when we're going into a recession or whatever happens, they print up stimulus checks and they send them out to the people. Why do they do that? Because it's a fast, easy way to get a lot of money into the economy really, really fast because they know the vast majority of people are gonna take that money, they're gonna cash the check and they're gonna spend it immediately on things. Is that good? Well, it depends how you look at it. Uh, yeah, it's good for the economy because it means a lot of money goes into the economy really, really fast. And they know that, which is exactly why they do stimulus checks, because they understand, OK, maybe it's going to cause a little bit of inflation. But at the end of the day, we're going to boost this economy up really, really fast. It's going to bring jobs back because now we have more um, we have more activity at stores. We need more um, we need more hiring back at stores and you know all these different places, corporate headquarters, all kinds of stuff literally across the board. We need all kinds of hiring because we need more people to fulfill the demand, to you know create more supply, more manufacturing, to stock the shelves, to drive the trucks, to ring people out at the cash register. I mean, you get what I'm saying here, right? It all leads, you know, it's a big circle here. 
Um, so that's what it all comes down to. So they know this, just like we saw back in 2020, late 2020, early 2021, same situation, okay? Anyway, hope this all makes sense. But again, I want to give you a quick update on what I'm watching closely. But again, basically starting now through the end of the year and early next year is when we're really going to start to see all the effects of those interest rate hikes from last year, the big ones, the big ones, right? If you watch NASCAR, the big one, right? Okay, I don't watch NASCAR, but my dad does. And he always hears about, oh, the big one, the big one's coming, right? Anyway, my point is, <laughs> my point is, we got to continue watching for the big ones, okay? When the big ones uh, work their way through the pipeline, that's what we got to watch for very closely because you just never know what this is going to do to the economy, okay? We do know this much. There's going to be some major contractions. We all know this. Basically, everybody is talking about this, but at the same time, the contrarian view would say, well, if everybody's talking about a contraction, maybe we should be taking the other side of the bet. Just saying. Okay, only time will tell. Only time will tell us the reality of the situation and what actually happens going forward. But I can tell you this much. If we dip into a deep, deep recession like what we saw in 2000, 2001, 2008, 2009, 2020, uh, 2021, you know, those types of situations like that, of course, I can't guarantee anything, but I would say the likelihood of additional checks going on at that time would be very, 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 very high in the event we get into a situation like that. And According to what they're suggesting, we're probably not too far off. So anyway, I want to keep you posted on what's up, what I'm watching here. And again, I could sit here literally for probably a couple hours talking about all the different things that I'm watching closely and all the details of everything going on right now. Super weird situation, but this is the reality of what's going on. It's a slow start, but once you start to see things kind of falling down, it's like a, an avalanche, right? Starts at the top of the mountain, kind of small, one little snowflake lands on the mountain, harmless. And all of a sudden that triggers the whole avalanche. It starts as a little trickle, then it starts to get a little bigger and bigger and bigger. By the time you get to the bottom, watch out. You don't wanna be in the way of that thing, right? Kind of the same thing with the economy. You're just sitting around at the top of the mountain, just hanging around. And then you get that one little snowflake that says, okay, that's it. We're going down now, guys. You know what I mean? <laughs> so anyway, hope this helps you again. So I wanna explain the situation that I'm watching closely. And again, I can tell you this much. There will be more checks at some point. Is it gonna be this year? I don't know that. Is it gonna be next year? I don't know that. Is it gonna be in the next five years? Well, depends on what happens with the economy, but we'll have to see what here, what happens going forward. But like I've said before, we got checks in uh, 2000, 2001, 2008, 2009, 2020, 2021, in these ranges. Every time the economy goes down, down the tubes, they chase it with checks, right? How do you like that for an analogy? Checks as chasers. I don't know. Let's leave it at that because why not end on a high note, <laughs> right? Anyway, hope that makes sense for you. Just remember that. Checks as chasers. When the economy goes down, they chase it with checks. Oh, that's a good one. I should make a shirt. What do you say? A t-shirt? Maybe a hat? I don't know. Just kidding. I won't do that. Anyway, enjoy your day. Hope this one helps you again. Please make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet. Share the video with your friends from your social media and go back and check out any of the other thousands of videos here on the channel. Until next time, enjoy your day. Take care and catch you again later in the next video.